Welcome back, everybody. We are back with another putter review. Yes. But we are in the new location. Correct, correct. We're opened up uh, full bore for booking and parties and everything over here in Alito. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Um, it is as private as you can potentially get. Yes, yes, this is definitely your room. It's closed up. Play your own music, play your games. You got a bartender or server, right? whatever. Oh yeah, guys, so we're gonna be reviewing the new Mizuno M-Craft putters. Um, they have three different styles. Uh, you'll see the, the pictures, the stills of all of them, but they've got kind of a short neck like Ryan's holding right there. Uh, kind of your classic answer style Newport. Mm -hmm. And then they've got a, a mallet also. Um, you'll also see in the pictures, they come in three different colors. They come in a satin, kind of your classic look. They come in a blue, and then we're not holding it as we speak, but it's the one that I'm currently putting with, and they have a black too, that's kind of a, kind of a matte black finish. It's pretty cool looking. I said, they just call them, you know, type one, type two, type three. The type one is the short neck. Type two is your classic. The type three is your mallet. Um, really good putters, milled face. I think one of my favorite things about this as far as like a, from like a consumer standpoint, price, whatever, um, I think they're coming in like retail right about $300, uh, somewhere in there, $299, okay. so kind of right in the good putter yeah, range. Yeah, just for frame of reference, what do you know what Scotty's are? Just the standard three, studios? 350 maybe, something like that. Yeah, for some reason I thought they might have, I think they're 350 to 399 okay. depending on which kind of head you go with. Yeah. Um, um, and then your, um, like your Odyssey, your Triple Tracks, um, yep. Stroke Labs, all those, those are running in the 250 range, somewhere in there. So it's kind of right in the middle of that. I would say it's it's where it needs to be for a milled, milled putter. putter. Yeah, yep. a, a, a well-designed milled putter is a little traditionally a little more expensive than mm -hmm. a insert putter because insert putters can get away with a few more margins of error. Yeah, because yeah. that insert's what's important, not necessarily the head as far as, I mean, on with to get the weighting. Yeah, so the thing, I was saying before that I like about it is weights. So in the bottom we have two removable weights and every putter will get a picture of it. So you probably so see it best got, on this one. <laughs> yeah, you've got heel toe weights that you can move around and every putter free of charge or included with it comes with a weight kit um, where a lot of your other manufacturers, you get it and then you have to go online and Let's go ahead. <laughs> pay a lot uh, more money for your little screw in weight down there. Also doesn't come with a wrench. <laughs> yes, this one comes with a little kit. Also, we'll have a picture of it somewhere. Um, it's gonna come with standard two eight gram weights, one toe, one heel. Then in your weight kit, you're gonna have two three gram weights and two 13 gram weights and a little wrench with it. And so uh, we're gonna talk about this once we put the putter on the TrackMan unit, which yes, you can do. Yes, track man. absolutely, get face stuff. Um, but what and why that's important is that, and this is why it's important to get fit for your putter is because you don't just have to go with the two eights or the two twelves or whatever numbers you just said. Correct. Um, you can alternate, put one heavier to the toe or to the weight, but what, if, if we did that, Aaron, if mm -hmm. I put a heavier weight to the toe and a lighter weight to the heel, what's gonna cause, what's gonna happen to the face when you come through? So you have heavier, heavier over there, so I tend to have a little bit more of an open face. Because it lags behind because of the weight. Because it lags, right. same kind of, thought that you'd have with like a driver if you have like a perimeter weight that you move around that kind of stuff <clears throat> excuse me so yeah I mean you can move them around if you're sitting here and you and you're you know you've got a good look you've got everything you want to see down there and then you're still you know fine-tuning that stuff that's what those weight kits are for to start so, messing around with that from the PGA professionals point of view or the golf mm -hmm. course point of view what this enables you to do with a putter that you have not been able to do previously or without a large expense mm -hmm. has been what adjustable sleeves have done to drivers it's allowed fitters to come in and to really fine-tune a putter versus just get close uh, starting out with the series two number two the classic yep. kind of answer Newport look Full, um, full plumber's neck. Yeah, full plumber's neck. It's, um, you know, one of those toe hang putters. You got um, satin finish. We talked, you know, off camera, we talked about different finishes, different feels. Right. Um, we're not really, me personally, I feel absolutely no difference between the finishes. Um, they are not, they're not painted. I guess would be the word I'm looking for there, or powder coated or anything sure. like that. Like it's- It's the metal. So it's, yeah. Pretty good, 
pretty good numbers there. Again, with our roll percentages, like I was saying at the beginning, we're going from two different kinds of turf. We've got a little lip there, things bounce. We can actually see on the track man that skid, roll, bounce, that kind of stuff. They have another little number you can, or another picture you can look at, tile, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, so here you've got it. So you got your ball speed, and then so down there in the red, that's your skid, and then the blue would be your roll. Um, it also will show you on the tiles actually how many bounces that you had. <laughs> I don't really need to know that. So, like on here, you know, everything that you're picking up. And then, well, that one for some, for, you know, for whatever reason didn't pick it up, but you oh, can I actually see, it there. see yep. on the right. Yeah, on the right, right there. I leave it up there. We'll see how we'll bad see, we are. We'll see if one picks it up. And it's for the entire length of the putt? Yes. Mm -hmm. So Aaron made a good point earlier too, that if we hit this to the screen all the way, it's still tracking it. So it could look a little weird at the very end. That's just because mm -hmm. it's hitting the screen. So we're going to try and keep our putts where they just barely tap the screen or they're a little short of it. Yeah. So right there. So I got two, I got two bounces on that, which my two bounces were probably right Your off initial, the face. And then, and then whenever it switched over from so turf to turf. If we're going to subtract by one. Yeah. Okay. So if you're seeing multiple bounces, Oh boy. See what that one looks Sheep. like. I just 37. jammed it down into it. Blah, 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 blah. So many it didn't know what to do with it. Yeah, I can't be too. That was, that was generous. Yeah. But checking our other styles out, this would be similar. Yep. Similar to the, the actual head looks pretty much the same. It's just got a different neck on it, a little bit shorter neck. And it's blue. Yep. And this one's blue. This is the Smurf putter. <laughs> I will say I'm very curious to see how that specific putter in the black one, not so much the chrome one, mm -hmm. um, how that finish holds up. Yep. You know, like when you do wedges, for instance, within a handful of shots, especially out of a bunker, um, those those finishes have a tendency to start to come off mm -hmm. and you lose it on the sole and then where you're impacting the crowd, right especially on like a black finish. Yep, especially where you're coming through here. Yep. It's always brushing through there. Now like a little bit, a little bit thicker grip, this thing feels like. Sure, yeah, I'm the same my way. My hands are wrapped all the way around it. I, like your, your slim 2.0, 3.0 mm -hmm. on your putter is a little bit thicker than I prefer, but not by much. I typically will put a two on it. Two. So this is type three mallet, straight back, straight through. Yep. All these um, have the standard, standard eight and eight weight. I think from the stock putters, that might be your best one. Yeah. As far as your numbers. numbers. I don't know if you like the way it looks or not, but. Numbers go. Cause that last one was on it. Yeah, that one feels pretty good. I may switch. <laughs> Now his putter obviously has been specced out to him. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> there's one, the decent one. Right. So this is a little bit different and he's mm -hmm. putted with it a lot. So we'll just talk about the one, but, and then I'm gonna roll a few. Ooh, a little jumpy on a that one. A little wavy. A little jumpy. And I yeah. definitely feel that going from. Right. From that last one to this one. And so in the in the weight yeah of it the adjustment yeah i mean so, definitely not very much weight yeah aaron is currently there. playing with this one but in all fairness it's literally been like a week <laughs> yeah um but before that you were playing with the lab the lab mm -hmm. which not there's two versions of the lab putters it's lab um it's a direct force putter yeah it's yeah. a different kind of putter you yeah, should probably review that to be honest with you yeah it's way different uh, there's a lot of science that goes into that one it's not for me i can't take the look personally i yeah i, I mean, tried I, it for a little while i like the results but after a little time i just it, it was too much for me and i that's coming from a blade player and we'll show an image of it so you kind of get an idea what we're talking about maybe we'll pull one out and review it yeah but everything from the grip has been everything on that putter has been designed with for something a specific in purpose. yeah yep. it all has a specific purpose yeah they've um, so he's playing with that before but you said that you've putted with blades more traditionally mm -hmm. so this isn't as big of an adjustment back to you now huh? now I normally have been putting, so the last six months I've been putting with a traditional Spider X. Okay. So, uh, but I come from the world of blades. Uh, traditionally, actually, pretty similar to you. Um, full plumber's neck, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I, he's all 35. Um, yeah. Okay, sure. so everybody here is 35 inches. Full disclosure, I no, put with it. No, 34. A, okay, this one feels better than like those. Or those 34 too. They should all be 34, because I had an Maybe inch. Maybe I'm putting with 33 one. then. Jeez, these feel long. Um, yeah, I was before, before the, uh, before the lab. I had, 
I think is the best head that Odyssey ever came out with. That uh, number seven. Oh yeah. That kind of fang. Yeah, yeah. Saber tooth looking. Comes straight thing. back off straight and then back, kind of has, has the curvature the two, inside. The oval, kind of, yeah, 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 a little curve in the middle yep. of it. It's really, really well balanced. I think that was the the best head that Odyssey came out with, and it's also one of the more difficult ones to get because they're always sold out of it. Right. I mean, right out of the gates, I like the way these look. Sometimes with the blade putters, you get a real big heel. Mm -hmm. You guys are looking stick. for more balance. I'm not a fan of that. I had a um, as an Odyssey Toulon. Mm -hmm. I forget which model it actually was because I didn't have in the bag very long. Um, in a previous golf professional life, I was sponsored by um, Callaway, so I obviously they wanted me to putt with yeah. something from their Odyssey line. So I, I went to the Toulon because I've always liked milk putters, um, and it was just too big this way. It just it, it, you could see it coming Set way it down, out here. It. Yeah, it was just it always felt kind of awkward. And right out of the gates, the only thing I don't like about smaller grips is that I don't I, I try to keep my palms pretty flat, and I'm like, oh yeah. god. Yeah, feels like a like, smaller grip feels like it's just my hands eating it up. I don't even have big hands. Right. I will tell you though, as far as feel, oh boy. <laughs> Put, don't talk. As far as feel of these putters, they're right up there with Scotty's and every other milled yeah, putter. It's a it's a good, it is a solid face. It, it, but it is the importance of getting fit for a putter. Yeah. It's almost more important than a driver, but yet everybody and their brother will spend up to 800 bucks or so on a driver between fitting, shaft upgrades, that yeah, kind of they stuff. They won't spend $200 on a putter. Right. They'll just keep on going and buying $65 putters. See, so like this for me, the heel seems too big, but that's also could be the connection with the club. I don't know. It, the heel feels like it's too far out, but I like the look of it. And that got really vertical. Seven bounces. <laughs> yeah got back here and I felt like I did that. But it, it feels balanced and that's my biggest thing. Here, point two, I guess it was balanced. My biggest thing with putters is whether or not they're balanced yeah. and how they feel coming off of it. All right. Face to come through. I like a lot of things where the weight is more up to my hands. So this kind of is counteracting that, mm -hmm. but counteracting that. But I do like the black look. I don't really like a chrome look. I do like the feedback off the shaft though. Yeah. A little bit more. I I've actually, now that I've put that in, cause that lab that I had, I had a stability shaft in the lab too. Did you really? Uh huh. I didn't know that. And, but it felt, it felt different. Um, whether it was this, I don't heavier or something, I don't know. So I'm really thinking about going to like a counterbalance type grip so I can put some more weight right. in the top of it and feel some, feel some more in my hands. Yeah. I mean, overall, it's a really good putter line. Yeah, I would say I think it's probably done a great job. Sorry, lefties, they do not make them left-handed. Yeah, putt from the right side, you'll be yeah, better anyway. Just switch up. <laughs> no, but I'll give you your mm -hmm. putter back. So I don't lean on it and bend it because you know this thing's solid. <laughs> I don't know you that treadmill almost gave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah, watch that one. But uh, it's it's surprising because Mizuno's not known for putters. They're really not known for anything but iron. Yep. Um, but they've really put some money and time and effort into their driver line or their metal woods line. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the putter line, I think that that's gonna translate faster because they are so good at that forging process. Yep. And being that these are milled putters that are one solid piece. Yeah, this is definitely gonna surprise some people. Uh, yes. And if I remember correctly, you were telling me this is currently in second place on the My Golf Spy. Mm -hmm. Is it putters or blade putters? I gotta look at you. I right. need to look and make sure, but I just, it was on their list. It said putters, so I don't, it's okay. It's high up on a list. It's I will tell you. High up on a my golf spy list. That is you one of the better check. feeling putters I've felt putted with in a while. Yes, they we they um, call it February. Maybe they came out. I may I may be lying on that. I may be off. I know in December um, our rep came in with them and showed them to us. But they weren't. And we out. rolled. They weren't out yet and right. rolled a few. And I was very impressed whenever they yeah. came out. I was like, okay, yeah, they're good. You good? So. Um, Mizuno M-Craft, I give it a thumbs up, really good putter. Um, obviously it's gonna go into getting fit, checking the weights, checking the length, that kind of stuff. But if you're looking for a classic mm -hmm. forged, milled, whatever, a classic style putter, look at these. Don't Absolutely. just walk in and go straight to Scotty Cameron or walk in and go straight to Benton Nardi. Give, give them a look. These are in that category now. Yes. You know, we've said before on this channel, especially with the Wilson D7 Forges, mm -hmm. that 
don't just this preconceived notion of there's really only a couple of manufacturers out there that do something well. There are a lot of manufacturers out there that do things very well. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect example of that again, just like the Wilson D7 Forge. If you're in that Callaway Apex line, or that kind of an AP2, well it's not really AP2 anymore, but whatever it would be now, yeah, yeah, then you um, should absolutely go hit the D7 D7 Forge. Yep. This is that same thing. If you're looking at a Bettinardi, a Scotty Cameron, uh, anything that's a truly milled putter, i.e. a non-insert, a Toulon from mm -hmm. Odyssey, then I would absolutely at least give this a test drive. Not gonna be for everybody. Yep. Um, but if, if I wasn't sponsored by somebody, which right now I'm really not, so the, that bag is a hodgepodge of stuff. I've got tailor-made irons, I've got a Callaway three wood, I've got some Callaway wedges. It's all over the place. So um, same thing here. It's add, this would be a good addition to anybody in the milled bag, assuming you can get it fit for you. And with the addition of the weighting system that is interchangeable yep. and provided. Yes. Provided, that's nice. It should be workable for you. Yeah, absolutely. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Comment below. Thank y'all for checking in. Thanks, guys.